put out great content and build brand awareness and cater to your idle person then intentionally grow your community don't just expect people to find it like get out there and actively work to grow it and then care about your people to a ridiculous level make them feel you know served and and cared for and cherished Hey there, I'm Maya De Leon, and my mission is to help creatives like you translate what you love to do into a highly profitable income. I'm a mom of three who began as a lettering artist and grew it into a six-figure business. If I made it possible, so can you. Every week, we'll dive deep into topics like building your confidence, getting comfortable talking about money, and nurturing your passion while juggling life and family. So if you're an ambitious creative who wants to craft the life you love, get cozy, feel at home, and listen to The Confident Creator Show. Is building a community important for your business? If so, you are in for a treat today because we have someone who is an expert in this field. And in today's episode, we will talk about why you need to start building a community and how it impacts the growth of your business. Tom Ross is the founder and CEO of Design Cuts, an incredible community of 750,000 creatives and the highest rated design marketplace in the world. In his spare time, he is known as the community building guy and is passionate about teaching fellow entrepreneurs how to build a highly engaged online communities. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thank you, Maya. It's so great to be here. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, so I really appreciate your time today. And I know I have seen your growth on social media, like with friends on social media, Instagram uh, specifically for quite uh, some time already. And I believe mm-hmm. that during the early years of, you know, design cuts, I was one of the artists who was invited to host a giveaway for the company, which I find super, super generous. Like who gives stuff that much for free? I was thinking about that at the time. And that was one thing that I learned from you. So it was amazing. But I know we're going to talk deeper into building communities today but before um we do that uh i want to invite you maybe if you can share with us a little bit of who you are what you do and how it all started for you is that okay yeah 100 percent um so i started young i was 12 years old and i started making websites with my best friend and it was just for fun but i loved the community side even back then and I remember one of the notable projects I worked on. I, it's pretty geeky, but I used to love the band Interpol, if you know them. Interpol, and I've I heard. I started, it. yeah, like re- really good, or at least the first two albums are. And I was obsessed as a teenager. So I started a fan site and it had a blog and gallery and all the usual kind of stuff, but it also had a forum, like an online message board. And it got so busy in the forum that people were literally spending their lives on there. Like they were chatting on there. We had two members, one uh, with a lady who lived in Australia and one with a guy that lived in America who formed a long distance relationship and met up. We had a team of moderators to keep up with the activity. And it got over a quarter of a million posts in this forum. And at one point, I believe it was legit busier than the actual band's forum because people were like coming over because they loved the sense of community there. And projects like that, I just felt really passionate about growing up. And I would always try and find ways to bring people together, build relationships and kind of create something bigger than myself. But the issue was, I wasn't really making any money from it. And so stupid young Tom came to the (laughs) incorrect conclusion, ah, means there's no money in community. And therefore, I need to like figure out how to make money online. If I want to do this internet thing, which I love for a living, I have to figure out how to monetize. So I googled internet marketing. And I'm sure you can imagine what came up. It was like super sleazy. Yeah. And this was pre-social media. So instead of like explode your following, it was like explode your blog traffic. Oh, yeah. And it was like loads of tips, just obsessed with that. And no one was talking about community. So suddenly I'm learning all this stuff and like a lot of it I still carry forward today. You know, there was some great fundamentals I picked up. I learned how to build email lists and understand what a funnel was and a bunch of, you know, internet marketing principles. 
but everyone was just obsessed with like the traffic numbers. That was the holy grail for all these marketers. So then when I took what I learned, I started my next blog. I, I started a design blog and it got a ton of traffic. Like in the first month, it got 100,000 visitors. And then pretty soon it was getting a quarter of a million visitors a month. And it ended up getting over 15 million visitors in its lifetime. And I thought, oh, by you know the standards of what all these internet marketers are telling me, I've made it, right? Like I must be a success. And I'm telling all my friends on oh, my blogs, getting millions of visitors. This is so cool. But it was really hollow and it was really empty. And, you know, I I made some money, like enough to kind of help pay through college, which is a lot cheaper here in the UK than you guys, uh, I believe. Um, but it was it was never like a long-term viable, sustainable business. And when I started digging into the traffic stats, I understood why. It's because I had a lot of visitors, but the time on site was terrible and the bounce rate was really high. The retention and return visitors was very poor. You know, I was getting tons of tons of traffic from things like stumble upon, if you remember that from back in the day. And so the whole thing was just one giant bloated vanity metric where at the top level it looks successful, lots and lots of unique visitors, but in actuality, it was hollow. It felt like a leaky bucket. And I realized like there was no real community out of those millions of people. Like very few of them seemed to really care, show up, engage, comment. And that felt really, um, I felt disenfranchised, to be honest. It was like everything I'd been taught was a lie. And then I started trying to find some better mentors that I resonated with more. And when I did that and I found some really, really wise mentors, they started telling me, actually, you were right the whole time. It isn't about exploding your traffic. It's about catering to an engaged audience, serving those people really well, understanding their wants, needs, and desires, providing them with you know, viable solutions and validating your products and all the stuff which I kind of you know, teach now and, and try and embody now. They got me back on that right path. And suddenly it clicked. I was like, oh, community was kind of the answer all along. It's just that I didn't have a good business model behind my communities. I didn't have product market fit. And so when I started my company, which I have run for the last eight years, Design Curse, that was genuinely my one aim, which sounds super dumb looking back. But we didn't have revenue goals. We didn't have like a traditional business plan. We didn't have member growth goals. We didn't have anything like that. All we had was my one goal to try and build the most engaged online community I'd ever seen. That was it. I knew I didn't want a single person in the community that was there apathetic or disengaged or lurking or whatever. I was like, I want every person showing up and engaging and and caring about this thing because I never want to feel that hollow, empty feeling again. And so when we started the company, I literally like made best friends with our first two, 300 customers. I was wow. chatting back and forth every day. Like I would, I'd respond to a support query. I'd help them with their problem. And then we'd just get into a conversation. And then I'd be emailing them like back and forth three times a day. And we'd be talking about our families and our hobbies and we would build real friendships. I'd be jumping on one-on-one video calls with them to learn more about them and see how we could do a better job. And a combination of like that deep, deep friendship and connection with our initial customer base. And then the fact we had exceptional product market fit and we built something that our market really wanted, it just took off. And all of our competitors, to my knowledge, have like VC backing and you know some big money behind them. We've never had any investment. We're entirely bootstrapped. We started with literally like zero pounds. We just spun up a server and built the website ourselves and, and launched it all for free with no marketing budget. And it, it took off. Like it, it went crazy in the first year. Like it just blew up. And then from there, it's kind of grown steadily. And I'm incredibly humbled and grateful for the community we have. I love our team. It feels so, so special what we've built. And I feel enormously proud to be part of this along with our team. And I have to put a huge amount of it down to the power of our community. Like we'd be nothing without them, to be honest. Yeah, so that's awesome. Actually, I remember, like I said earlier, you were inviting artists to host giveaways. You were building all these connections with artists, people, potential customers, collaborators, which was pretty amazing. When I realized that when you were talking about the history of design cuts, 
At first, I actually didn't know that Design Cuts, Design Cuts was actually built around community because I came from the scrapbooking world. So I initially thought that it was like that, like forums for creatives and then you have a shop. So yeah, it, it's more like a community, but I did not see any forum yet because I was focused on the shop until mm -hmm. you started all of these connections with creatives and artists like hosting giveaways and then inviting them over, you know, collaborating and stuff that I saw, ah, so this is what he's doing. He's like building a similar to what we were doing in the scrapbook world. We have all of these products for all different creatives. And then there's the community aspect. And then I remember you were hosting like weekly. I was also invited in one of your shows like the live weekly live shows right mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was an amazing experience so when i learned about all of these things inside design cuts i found it really really interesting and it actually picked my interest into building communities and then i also studied a little bit about it and it was interesting to know how community really impacts the business right and that's something that not a lot of people know most of us. Should we talk on that for a second? Yeah, sure. Go I, ahead. You're right. you're right. Like, I think people don't understand the benefit. And community is a strange beast. It's not mm -hmm. like an ad budget where you put in $2 and you get three out. Yeah. And that scares. I, I actually had a conversation with someone right before this call who was saying that their boss, like, kind of doesn't get that concept. He, he's more True. like many business owners. They're very transactional in their thinking and community is different. So th there's many, many benefits. First of all, the ROI, if you're really concerned about the business side and revenue side, it compounds over time and mm -hmm. it can be enormous. So there is a, a graph we actually uh, discovered recently from a, a big research project. And I think after two years, the ROI is like 2000%. Or something insane oh, and it wow, goes amazing. up and up and up and up but you see this inflection point at two years because community is inherently predicated on relationships and the same way it's like you don't you know meet your partner and get married after a week for most people or you don't meet your best friend and become lifelong buds after two days it doesn't work that way so like as more time goes on, the relationship gets exponentially stronger. Mm -hmm. And that's fantastic from a relationship stance, but also from a business stance, it means that year on year on year, those relationships, you know, I, imagine this, you've been part of our community for, let's say, five years. You're going to have inherently a lot more emotional attachment and loyalty and resonance and enjoyment and association with five years versus five days. True. Yes. Yes. I agree with that. And, and what what most founders do is five days in, why haven't I got my money back? <laughs> yeah. So and that's an issue. Yes. Some other people think that they can actually start making money easily off of people just by getting them into their system, their email list, their Facebook group, their Instagram, following them on Instagram. But it actually takes a lot of time. Mm. You need you need to nurture all these people that are coming because they're not just numbers. They're not just, you know, dollar signs, okay? They are people who wanted help from you, who wanted yep. your insights, who wanted your guidance, who wanted companion, you know, who wanted connection. So why not give them what they want? Because that is essentially the first step into building that relationship. And you said it's not just building all of this following. It's building friendship. It's building connection. And... Mm -hmm approaching people or allowing them in your inbox, allowing them to DM you is one way to actually build that relationship. And I have known people who actually detest that idea. Like, do you still respond to your DM right now? Every single person. Yes, yeah. me too. Case in point, um, the only period I didn't, I just finished writing my book. I was underground for three months. So I was off social media for three months and I didn't close off my DMs, but I wasn't on there responding. And I just started posting again in the last week and I went back through and I responded to every person, including people that messaged me like 12 weeks ago. And it was like thousands. It, it wow. took <laughs> days and days. Like I just spent hours every single evening for like several nights and I got back to every single person being like, hey, 
you hit me up in February. I see <laughs> this. I'm, I did not ignore you. I was writing my book. Sorry for the late reply. I appreciate the support. Whatever you know, the response was, every single person across every single platform. And you'd be amazed how many people do this. I chatted to Chris Doe the other day. He still does this, even at his scale, every person. Yes, me too. I talk to every single person except for those creepy dudes and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those I don't I just immediately block, but everybody who are legitimate followers asking questions, you know, asking feedback or, you know, just giving support, I respond to every single one of them because mm-hmm. they are important part of the community. There are people who needed help or companion or friendship, you know, and this is very very important to me. So I channel yeah. my insecurity with that. <laughs> like he, he, seriously, here's some honesty for you. So when my thumbs hurt and I think I can't respond to another person, or maybe I uh, consider for a second ignoring some of these, I think back to when I was an insecure teenager and I would message someone that I looked up to and they would leave me on red or they'd ignore me and it would make me feel like a piece of crap or like they didn't care about me. And I take that feeling and then I force myself to get back to them because I never want to make anyone feel like that. Yeah, it's the same for me, especially because I have this, you know, I have this inkling to start talking, especially give uh, if people are asking for help. I wanted to give help. I wanted to offer my insights. But then sometimes when you start posting in groups where you feel like, oh, I am not really a person that these people would want to hear from. And then you hear, you see other people getting a lot of comments and all of those stuff. And then (laughs) you get like nothing or (laughs) sometimes it feels bad. And that's also one of the reasons why, although I don't take offense on that anymore, not now, but we have learned from it already. You also feel like you don't want a person in your community to feel that way. Right. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it hurts. <laughs> it seriously hurts. And at least we have learned from our insecurities like that and making our community a lot better. I love what comes back from it as well. Like, I really, really like that you operate in that way. And I know you and I know that that's how you are. But what do you get back? You get people saying, wow, I can't believe you got back to me. Yes. Most people don't. Or that means the world, like, thank you. Or you made my day. Like all you get back is a sea of positivity. Mm-hmm. And so that feeds your energy for doing it. Yes, especially when you respond to emails like, yeah, oh, wow. I don't think I would ever receive an email from somebody like... <laughs> it's, it's, what does it's that say exciting. about most community leaders? right? Or most people on social media, the fact that people are amazed that you got back to them and that you're nice. And that's like staggering to them. To me, that's the obvious and only way to be. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel happy. Like, yeah, this made my day. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like another reason to start the day right and continue on with the business. And it's funny. So, but yeah, so let's talk about your book because uh, you have been in hiding <laughs> for three months finishing this book. And tell us about it. What is it? It's called The Community it's Manual. Called, yeah. The commu- yeah. So it's communitymanual.com. And what it is, I've been doing this, as I said, for like 15, 20 years in some form of an- or another. And, you know, there's been a lot of trial and error a lot of figuring stuff out, a lot of mentors, like I talked about earlier. But I really found my groove, I think, with my current company and and with my personal brand. I just, you know, I've really tried to tune in to what it takes to build a successful online community and to get people to care and show up. So I took all of those learnings and then I smushed them into a book that is 175 pages long. And then I tried to make it the most actionable thing around community building in the world that I know of. And I I literally have friends like taking premium courses and they're like, there's legit more info in this book. And then I thought, make it available for free because I want more community builders out there. I want more people to to care about their people and to spread positivity. So um, I really, I wanted it to be actionable as well. And apologies if you can hear rain. It is like monsooning where I am. Oh, don't worry. (laughs) I cannot hear it at all. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, the worst British summer on record. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's um, it, it's very actionable. And what I hate is when people just spread like truisms or headlines. 
So, you know, bring value, be authentic. Like those things are true, but I always think, okay, well, how? You need to break this down so people understand it. So, you know, it's really packed full with like diagrams and practical exercises and step by step, hold your hand through it. And most of all, real world case studies. Because personally, I learn the best seeing how other people are doing it. Mm-hmm. I remember when I used to take marketing courses and stuff back in the day, I would kind of understand the concepts, but I'd be like, now show me 10 businesses implementing them because I want to see how it works in the real world, not just theoretically. And so, yeah, I got 30 case studies and it's people from, um, you know, incredible community builders like Chris Doe and James Martin, Mike Jander and many others, uh, Becca Cortese, amazing case study, but also people that run and started and work for billion dollar brands. And what was really interesting is they're all doing the same stuff. You'll get like the YouTuber with a hyper engaged audience of true fans that is actually doing the same stuff as a billion dollar sportswear brand. Yeah. It's the same tactics. It is the same tactics. And that's how it is powerful, right? Yeah. Like it's so ubiquitous. And thing is like at a top level, it's not overly complex. It's like, get your business fundamentals right to give yourself a fighting chance. Then, you know, put out great content and build brand awareness and cater to your idle person. Then intentionally grow your community. Don't just expect people to find it. Like get out there and actively work to grow it. And then care about your people to a ridiculous level. Make them feel, you know, served and and cared for and cherished and just build incredible relationships at scale. Yeah. And then just rinse and repeat. And obviously there's a lot of nuance within those points, but like that is the headlines, right? Put yes. something great into the world, build a tribe of people around it, and then care about those people relentlessly. I agree, I agree. And did I hear did I hear you right? You mentioned this is 175 pages and you're giving it all for free. I heard it right, right? Yeah. Yeah. So my aim was, um, I've been writing this book in my head for like seven, eight years since I started my company. And I originally, I was going to get it published as like a, a hardcover book or whatever. And then I talked to Mike Jander, who I do my podcast with. And he said, when he did his book, he had to work with publishers for six months. It pulled all his focus away from his company. He had to go back and forth with editors. I'm so busy with my company right now. Mm-hmm. My, I don't have time. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want to wait anymore. I don't want to yes. wait another three years to put this book out. I think now's a good time. People need to hear it. Community's the future. So I just made it a digital ebook. And I'm just wow. like, yeah, put it out there. And yeah, so everybody is going to benefit from all of this amazing content that you have put inside that book that is supposed to be, you know, a physical book. I just can't believe it. I know you're doing a book, but I never realized that you're giving it for free for everybody. So, wow, that is an amazing gift to the community. Thank you. Yeah, I I hope so. I mean, I genuinely think it will have a a ripple knock-on effect because so much of it is predicated on kindness and the stuff that you and I resonate with. And it's like, if it can inspire a few more people to be kind and care about their people, then that could have an impact, I hope. Yeah. So if there's one teaching in your book that you wanted to share to everybody listening right now, if you could only pick Mm -hmm. one, what would be it? That's hard. (laughs) (laughs) Did I hit a hard question? You did. I mean, yeah, there's a lot in there. Um, One of my favorite things is that there's magic in the unscalable. I think everyone's always trying to think too scalably. Mm -hmm. And... I think actually just going and I think you can build a community one person at a time. Yes. Truthfully. Yes. Like one relationship at a time. Kevin Kelly talks in his essay, 1000 True Fans, how you just need 1000 True Fans to actually support a highly successful, lucrative business. And you could do that in three years if you befriended and got a fan a day. Yes. And, and talk that, to them, that's right? Controllable. Talk to them, right? Like if, if that was, you know, you're running your, your business and shipping your product, whatever is happening uh, operationally. But if you devote time every day and you try and bring enough value and build enough relationship that you're going to win over one person per day, that is inherently so controllable. And I think people get really intimidated at the prospect of like, oh, I need to build this giant audience and then I need to funnel them down and, 
convert 1% of them or whatever it might be. And it just feels it feels much more in your power when you think about it in that sense. It's like, I'm just going to go make one friend every day. And that's yeah. fun. It's controllable and fun. And, and so, you know, in an outreach and community growth perspective, there's magic in the unscalable. But there's a whole section in the book where I talk about like personalize and delight and and the magic that exists in those little personal moments. And there's a ton of them. It's like, you know, at Design Cuts, we, when I did this, we had about 500 designers that sold products with us. And I said, I want to do a Christmas message. And instead of just filming it and saying, hey, designers, Merry Christmas from Design Cuts. So I was like, I want to do a personalized video for each one of them. And so I did. And I stood there being filmed for three hours. And I addressed every single one of them by name and I wished them and their families a Merry Christmas. And after three hours, I completely lost my voice because I've been speaking <laughs> nonstop. This was before we had a dedicated filming space. So I did it out in our open plan office and my team hated me because after three hours of being like, Merry Christmas, my da, 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 like over and over again. Um, and then our video guy spent a couple of days cutting it up and we emailed it. And the response was insane. People were like, holy crap, like, I got personal video addressing me by name from your CEO. Who does that? This is ridiculous. You know and what? Funny you mentioned yeah. that. I did the same thing, but it's it's not for fellow that. designers, but it's actually during a launch that I, that I had. And then there were people who were on the fence, like, is this the right for me? Is this the right time to get it? Is this something like... But you have already built that um, connection somehow. And they were just asking for more, a little bit more push and a little bit more of, you know, probably there are questions in their heads that they cannot express. So I sent them personalized message and there are over a hundred of them. I did it for a whole day because I'm not like you who can speak English so naturally. So it took me the whole day for all hundred people. And the next day I was like, I cannot talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot talk right now. So, but that is amazing in terms of experience. That has, uh, you know, I think it was one of the happiest moments I've ever, I've ever done. And mm -hmm. yes, some of them converted to sales, which was pretty awesome. But some of the people that I had that ended up in my coaching program, which is pretty great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I love that because not only is it the, the right thing to do, and not only is it highly effective, but no one else does it. Yes. Or hardly anyone else does it apart from us and, you know, a few like-minded individuals. And so it's a great point of differentiation in a world where other brands and founders are flat out ignoring them. We are talking directly to them. And I can already hear some of the listeners thinking, oh, but that's so unscalable, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. That's the point. Yes. That's why it's hard. And therefore, that's why not everyone's doing it because anyone can hit a mail merge mass newsletter, right? but not everyone's willing to put in the work or to prioritize that kind of stuff. And you can do it at scale. Case in point in the book, Ben Francis, who's the CEO of Gymshark, worth over a billion dollars now, one of the biggest sportswear brands in Europe, and they're growing enormously. They had a Black Friday meltdown where all these technical things went wrong. He sat at his desk and he wrote a thousand personalized apology letters to customers. And he's wow. the freaking CEO. And that's one of the key reasons they've blown up and continue to as a brand because they cherish those unscalable moments. So at every level of business, I believe there's scope for this. And I believe it cuts through the noise and it blows people away and it makes you memorable and it imbues loyalty and it's fun and the positivity you get back. Basically, there's like endless benefits. And the only drawback or downside is that it's really hard work. Yes, it takes a lot of hard work, but... There's a lot more to get from it than the hard work, you know. It's more. There is. There is more. And to like to wrap up this point, there's um, here's a paradigm shift. Our phones have statistics of how much time we spend on social media, right? Yes. For most of us, it's a ton. Think of how many hours we all spend aimlessly scrolling our feeds, literally achieving nothing apart from like rotting our brains and depressing ourselves. <laughs> So it's been yes. proven it's really bad for you, right? You're just there, scroll, scroll, scroll like a zombie. It's terrible. But we all expend hours doing that. Can you imagine the damage we would do with our businesses and brands and community building efforts if we reallocated those aimless, mindless hours building relationships? 
And case in point, when I, I gave a talk with Ian Barnard in Birmingham a couple of years ago, I encouraged the 100 people in the room to DM me um, and I promised I would send a video message back to all of them. That took me two hours, right? I was late for dinner, but 100 people got a video DM calling them out by name, saying, thanks for coming to my talk. Created true fans, built a community. Those people stuck around. They supported me, right? It, it had so many tangible benefits. Do you know how many times I've just lazed around and scrolled for two hours? Or like laid in bed when I should be sleeping, scrolling? Two hours goes by in the blink of a second, right? Yes. Yes, so I agree. I, yeah, I'm calling myself out and everyone else. It's like, stop freaking wasting time <laughs> on that and go deploy it to the unscalable magic moments where everyone's going to love you and you're going to get all this positivity back because I promise it's a better use of your time. Yes, connections are really, really, really amazing. So I wish we have a lot of time to talk about it, but this has been really um, it has been such an honor to have you here on the show. And I know that building a community is a, an absolutely powerful and greatly impacts the business that you have. So if you haven't started out yet, you guys who are listening, what are you waiting for? You know, Tom has given us so much insight today. So I'm inviting you all to start taking action. And Tom, I know we still have a lot to talk about. And maybe next time I can invite you over to the show again. But it was such a privilege to have you on the show today. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Mai. I really appreciate it. And before we officially wrap this episode up, can you tell our our listeners where can they get the copies of Community Manual and where else they can find you online? Sure, yeah. So it's uh, communitymanual.com or failing that, it's my website, which is tomross.co, so tomross.co. Um, and if anyone listening has any questions, here's a little unscalable moment for you. If you yeah. get the book and you're stuck or you have questions, literally hit me up. Guarantee I will get back to you and I will help you for free. Yes. And if you didn't catch up on all those links he mentioned, they will be in the episode show notes as always. Just head over to mydeleon.com slash Tom and you'll find everything you need. And if you like this episode, leave it a review on iTunes because every time you do, you help the podcast get discovered by other creatives who need the inspiration to pursue your own creative dreams. And as always, keep creating and stay confident. Until next time, this is mine.